I love creating charts because it's just such a great quick way to snapshot how you're doing month per month, whether it's on a transaction basis, number of users signing up, cumulative users that have signed up, and then compare that to different months. But I found in the past that, that understanding the data structure behind charts is where people sometimes get lost. So let's have a quick look at the data structure and then also how we can print these values to create really nice looking charts. So I've gone ahead and created two charts based on just transactions, right? So payments, the chart on the left. And by the way, these are both bubble charts. The chart on the left has months and has multiple transactions per month. So we have two transactions in January, two in Feb, two in March. And then on the right hand side, what I've done is I've taken these and I've created a cumulative chart. So on Feb 21st, we have 19,400. And that is basically at this time, Feb 21st, it's Feb plus January. January had 7,300, February had 12,100, and that totals 19,400 and so forth. So at the end, we've got 87,300, and that is all of these summed basically. And I'll show you how to set that up. First on the left, let's have a look at this chart. So I've created a new data type called transactions. And what I've done is just added in an amount and a date, basically. You could use create a date. However, for this tutorial, I created these within the same 10 minute window, so it wouldn't work, right? The date needs to be sequential. So let's have a look at one of these. Now the way charts work is time and value. Value on the y-axis on the left, time at the bottom. So we need both of those fields if we want to create a chart. So I've got value and amount basically, a number field, and I've got a date here. And that's how we print a chart, okay? A chart's going to look at rows in your database. It needs value and it needs time. So it needs an amount and it needs date. It doesn't have to be an amount, any number would do. Where people can get lost sometimes is having like a list of things on a field. But the problem with that is it doesn't correspond to a particular time, which is why we need we need to create new things, right? New rows in the database. And then the chart is basically printing a visual based on all of these rows in the database from each amount and each date. So this chart on the left, it's a bar chart, okay? Now, you won't see grouping to begin with. So let me just delete what I've done here. Let's delete all of these. And I've just done a quick design here. So the data source to begin with, I set as transaction. Then I said, just do a search for transactions, all of them, okay? You can add your constraints there if you have any. But what that'll do is, let's have a look. What that'll do, if we say amount, uh, let's just leave it blank for a second. See how it's grabbing all of the individual transactions. For me, it's much more useful if these are grouped or bucketed in particular time frames, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, or annually. So let's do this monthly. Let's basically take these two, put them in January, these two February, or whatever corresponding dates they have. And this is where we click on the more option and we type group. Bubble gives us the operator called grouped by. And this is created specifically for bucketing values or dates together, okay? So we've got a new grouping. Now we're going to obviously group by the date, the date being the month. So then it says, what type of grouping do you want? And I'm going to say month. The interval would be one month, every one month. And the starting date is, I'm going to go search for the first transaction and that's going to be my starting date. So go search for transactions, order them by date 
most recent, which means, sorry, we have to reopen this again, that I just want the last item, last item's date. Okay, now I'm going to click on a new aggregation. So within these dates, these buckets of dates or these months, so within January, within February, what value are we printing? So that's called an aggregation. Okay, the aggregation type is going to be sum. If it was count, then it would be two, 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 two every month. So that would give me the number of transactions. I want the sum, and I want you to sum up the amount field. So I'm only going to give us amount here. And then the value expression was basically the current points sum of amount. Okay, and the label, give us the date, and then just format that date so it's better to read. So let's say uh, shorthand May 5th. Yep. So if we go back, now we can see that the sum is going to be printed in a sec. There it is there. So now it's taking all the transactions from January and displaying it as January here. What I can also do is on the value expression, let's go to the more option, just format as a currency. I'm going to say no decimal place, US dollars. Ah, sorry, that's in the wrong place. It is actually customized tooltip. Ah, here it is here. Much better, $12,100, $28,200. Okay, fantastic. Now the one on the right, let's have a look at see how we've done this. So we're also doing search for transactions, okay, and group by. This is exactly the same. Date, month, interval is one. Starting date is the first transaction. The first, the first transaction created. Then we're summing the amount fields. Okay, the label expression is the same as well. But the value expression is something different. So if I look at the value expression here, I'm taking the current points sum of amount. On this, I'm doing something else. So I'm pasting in search for transactions. Okay, but the key difference here is this expression here. Where I've got date is smaller than the current point, so the point that's plotting on the chart, that current point's date, and then just add a month. And then this is the trick to cumulative charts, okay? Date needs to be smaller than the current point's date plus month one. That's because I'm dealing in months, okay? If I was dealing in days, it would be plus days one. And then that allows us to then get cumulative. Let's also change this to um, currency. Yeah, perfect. So go ahead, have fun, experiment with this, and also have a look at all of the bubble plugin charts that are available. You can do some really cool stuff with those plugins.